Hi, I'm Donalia Van Vliet Geltz, and um, I want to talk today about how movement heals. I've always been very interested in health created from movement and breath. Um, and that is really the topic of our conversation today. So a little bit about my background. Um, I grew up moving and dancing. I love movement and dance. And it was, for me, a way that I connected to the world and connected to myself. And as I grew older, I just kept studying movement and dance. And became very interested in things like Tai Chi. I've been a Tai Chi teacher for over 30 years. And then I met this wonderful modality uh, called continual movement um, almost 30 years ago, or I guess it is 30 years now. And I that really helped me so much to really feel that I had met something that combined everything that I needed in movement and dance meaning that continual movement, we use breath, sound, and along with moving. The importance of using all three of sound, breath, and movement is essential, I think, for creating a complete full experience. I hold a PhD in clinical um, somatic psychology. I am the director of continual movement. And um, I also run an integrative health center. So you can see how my whole life has had this passion around movement and integrative health. I think that there's simple ways that we can do in today's world to really create a healthier way of living. And right now, because of what's going on globally, we need to be able to have this at our hands, at home, and be able to do it in an easy manner. For instance, a lot of people, there's a lot of talk about mindfulness. Well, I actually don't particularly like the name mindfulness. I like the name bodyfulness. And what I'm going to share to, with you today is a bodyfulness meditation that will help create more, hopefully help create more, uh, not only physical health, but emotional health, and actually maybe relieve that anxiety and fear that seems to be going on globally uh, with all that is happening to people. Um, fear is not a bad emotion, but if we get locked down and we get fixated in it, it's not the best for us. So a little bit about uh, Continual Movement. It was created by founder uh, Emily Conrad. And back in 1967, so it's been around a long time, and it's really considered a very important somatic practice. And somatic means uh, the involvement of the emotions, the spirit, and the body. It comes from the Greek word soma. So anyway, somatics is concerned with uh, being present in the moment, the experience. And that's why I find continual movement especially interesting because we're not doing movement and trying to engage in trying to look like something of the past. We are engaged with connecting to our body, but having full bodyfulness and being present here and now. So today what I would like to do is actually teach you two of our breath sounds and a little bit of a movement sequence. And I feel um, that if we did this in the morning and we did this last thing at night or in the evening at some period, that it really will change the way you are adapting and facing what is currently going on. So the first uh, breath I want to do, it's, it's going to be what I'm going to call a modified cave breath. Uh, and it's a for those who have practiced continuum, you may have learned different versions of this. But this cave breath, I'm, we're actually going to put some experience and um, behind it, meaning that um, it, for me, is when I'm doing it, I am actually exhaling all negativity. I'm, I'm finding it to be like a 
purging of toxins, of, of stress. I'm, I'm having it be a breath that is of letting go and um, letting go of that which I don't need and dissolving uh, the old fixations in my body. So the breath, go. it's like this. So first of all, I want to share with you that we always take a baseline and a baseline is simply checking in what's here now, what's present. And we always do this because it's, if we don't do that, how are, we going to, how are we going to know we have created change at the end? You, if you take your baseline, again, this is my science. You take your baseline and then you take an ending baseline, you will really notice what has changed, what is different. So going in, feeling my... Um, Self, you might check like, are my shoulders tied or I'm noticing my shoulders are tight. I'm no, noticing my heart is beating a little fast. So I'm just paying attention to that. Not trying to change anything, just noticing what's here now. There's a little gurgle in my stomach uh, that just happened um, from my autonomic system. And just, just connecting. The body loves to be connected into. Um, and after that, I'll do the, I'm, we'll do the breath. And the breath goes like this. It's a large inhalation, and then I'm just going to exhale. And just pause and allow the inhalation to occur. And again. Pausing, going into what we call open attention, just being present with what is. And I can feel my body's just wanting to just relax and move around a little bit. And I'm allowing, I'm not staying stuck. I'm allowing the flow and the gentleness of my body's fluid system to just extend through my whole being. So that's the cave breath. And for me, when I check in right now, I feel, well, my heart's less uh, fast and it's beating. I just, I feel really sort of down in my body. I feel present in my body. So already I have just let go of all the things that are really sort of creating tenseness. Maybe it was the morning newscast or the latest um, social media thing that has come on about things. Just letting all that fade in the background and just be present with one's own self. So that's, that's the first breath. And then we're going to combine it with a second breath that I think is really important for us to do now. And it's called the who breath. And there's a lot of different variations on the who breath. And I want us to really play with the variations. Why am I giving this breath? I think this breath can really help increase lung capacity. And we know that the virus actually strikes the lungs. And so having an exercise and movement uh, that can really uh, clear the lungs, um, connect to the lungs and hopefully create more uh, ability to have spaciousness in the lungs. In fact, I, one of the reasons I really, I, we ha I haven't been able to do the research on this, but I'm pretty sure it will work is there's, um, when you go to have um, tests for lung capacity in that, in the hospital or you're, you're, you have maybe had an operation, they actually give you these little tubes and you blow into these tubes to create more ability of your lungs. This is the way you exercise your lungs. Well, this is much the same practice, but we just don't have the tube and we don't need the tube if we do it this way. So again, going inside and here is, I'm, 
the who. And it's a really, a real slow down who. But then what I want us to do is after doing a few of those, take and play with this a little bit more like this. and then open attention. And then I would go back and I would do the modified K breath and the who and layer those uh, one on top of the other. And for about five to 10 minutes, I am sure you will have results from it. Uh, everybody that I have taught it to so far has had very remarkable re results. Uh, there is science data behind this. First of all, we do know breath and sound actually does enable us to connect with our vagal tone. My dear friend, Dr. Stephen Porges in the polyvagal system, he talks about it, the importance of having vagal tone and having adaptability in the vagal tone. This exercise, I am sure, will give you that adaptability and I will have results from the teacher's research pretty soon in a few weeks and we will see from that and we'll even be doing father things but there are other people like uh, Brown and Gabar uh, in, did research uh, with breath and sound and they saw that it did definitely connect to vagal tone and they are calling for more research um, so I, I'm telling you that in today's time, especially if we're going to be at home, um, some social isolation, which is so needed to lower the curve, we need to have practices that we can do that will, A, help us release emotionally and release our fears and, and get back to a neutral space of balance within, and two, like the who breath, what it's doing, it's a physical exercise for the lungs. And we need to be exercising our lungs. We need also, I think the more connected we are to our lungs during all of this, the more um, ability we will have to be able to heal and, and stay strong through this. So that's my two things for today. And I really invite you, and I would love for you to please, uh, let's share in this time. Um, one of the things in polyvagal that Steve is very big on is the need for social engagement. So let's, we're here for each other. Let's get through this together through really healthful bodyfulness meditations. So thank you very much. And I'm planning on several other um, episodes to come out and I will go deeper into the science of all this for those of you who are really interested and go more into just all the different capacity and possibilities with breath and sound to help us live a healthier life. Thank you.